Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to get a job as a blockchain developer. And this is a hot topic because, you know, blockchain development is such an in-demand skill set right now. And I know this is a question that a lot of you are having who've been watching this channel is, you know, how do I get a job as a blockchain developer? So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to become blockchain developers. Okay, so let's talk about why blockchain development is so hot to begin with. Well, the number of people who know how to do it is relatively small and the demand for it is pretty big because you know we're building out the blockchain space, we're building out this ecosystem, and there's a lot of people who are trying to launch projects to be kind of be the next big thing that happens. You know, there's lots of problems that people are trying to solve, like scaling and you know, reaching mass adoption with blockchain. And it's a really exciting time to be kind of inside of that effort. And also, there's a lot of money floating around because, you know, we've had such big ICOs, we've had, you know, new blockchains built, big proof-of-work blockchains, and we're basically, like, printing new money. It's just what's, it's what's happening. So there's a lot of capital in the space that's being thrown at projects, and now is a really good time to be, you know, making money as a blockchain developer. So let's talk about how to do it. So I'm going to point you towards some resources for finding jobs as a blockchain developer. I'm going to point you towards like some strategies about how to actually get the jobs. And I'm also going to talk about, you know, maybe some reservations that you have about getting a job as a blockchain developer, or like even how to get a job as a developer, like how to overcome self-doubt, maybe challenge some preconceived ideas that you have that are keeping you from actually doing that. So we'll kind of jump into those one by one. So first, um, if you're looking for a job, there's lots of ways to find it. And I want to point you to a new resource online. This is uh, cryptojobslist.com. It's actually really good. Um, so this is you can find your next job in the blockchain industry. And this is not just for developers. It's for other jobs too, but there's lots of developer jobs. So you can see that like the top companies uh, in the blockchain space are hiring on this website. You can see the logos here. So the Ethereum Foundation, Consensus, CryptoKitties, and like lots of others. So yeah, if you go down this list, you can you know see a lot of those you know different ways to find jobs. Um, so I would recommend first you know looking at the developer jobs. Uh, you can scroll down this list. Um, you can also see things that are specific to Solidity, you know, the programming language that you use to write smart contracts on Ethereum. You know, I talk about a lot about Solidity on this channel and how to build smart contracts. And you can see there's lots of, you know, new jobs that are being listed uh, for that specific skill. So I'm gonna go back to developers. If you browse down this list, you can you know, look at different jobs and some of them even have like salary compensation listed on there. I mean, lots of six-figure jobs, lots of high six paying six-figure jobs, uh, 150,000 plus equity here at Circle. So take a look at this website. This is cryptojobslist.com. I'll put a link down in the description below so you can browse that more yourself. Um, and also while I'm here, I'm, I'll make a mention of something. Um, you know, if you feel like you want to look for another job besides developer job, technical writing is a big deal. And you can see there's a job here uh, listed for technical writing. Here's why technical writing is such a big deal in blockchain right now. Everybody's building all this technology they need to teach other people how to use and like nobody wants to do it. Like no one wants to write the stuff. Developers usually don't want to write it. And that's where technical writers come into play. Um, and so there's lots of new technology out there without documentation. So if you're a technical writer and you want to jump into the blockchain space, there's plenty of work for you to do. Okay, so another, um, here's the remote page. So these are all the jobs that are remote uh, ready, if you want to do that. Here's another website. This is uh, crypto.jobs. So this is another resource for you to look at. Um, you can see developer jobs on here. They got full stack engineer jobs, senior blockchain developer, um, lots of other stuff, IT security manager, things like that. So another great website for you to check out. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. This is crypto.jobs. And I want to point you to one more resource, which isn't necessarily a like a job website, but is a really great place for kind of interacting with people who uh, are hiring, 
which is Reddit. So if you go to reddit.com forward slash ethdev, uh, I'll put a link to that also down in the description below. There's a post that happens every month that's called uh, who's hiring and who's for hire. So if you click on that, um, it's got, you know, it's basically an open forum for people to post uh, jobs and apply to jobs and hear more about the jobs. So you can go there and you can see, you know, info about the companies. They'll post it. You can interact directly with people who want to hire. Um, you know, here's um, people, you know, basically posting their own resumes, their GitHubs and things like that. So that's another great place for you to look. So sometimes if you just go to these, you know, job postings and you like click through to the links um, to the website where they list the jobs, they'll just see like their careers page or their jobs page or their like join us page. And you can just find more jobs that way. So you click on this and here's the application. Um, but here's, I'm just going to change the URL to careers. And you can see like all their stuff listed. You know what I mean? So a lot of these companies, I mean, you can see consensus is hiring all the time. <laughs> uh, so that's a great way to also discover new jobs. It's not necessarily just on the jobs boards, but just click through to the websites that have the jobs listed and see all the things that they're hiring for. So that's a way you can find jobs online, but maybe what are some other ways you can find jobs? Like if you don't want to work remotely or you don't want to just like cold call a company. Um, well, if you ever have a chance to go to a meetup, that's a great way to just get to know other people who are blockchain developers who will get to know you. And that's a great way to just get to know people inside of a company before you start working there without having to, you know, just like cold call or, you know, walk up to a company for the first time, not knowing them and apply for the job and hope that you actually like working there. That's a lot of ways that you can kind of get a sense for what their company culture is like or the type of people who work there. So I would say that also conferences. Conferences are a big deal um, in crypto in general and blockchain technology. But if you go to these places and you're able to like show what you can do or talk to people, that's another great way for just to just have word of mouth and maybe get your foot in the door with somebody who is hiring. So now I want to talk about actually how to get the job, not just the resources, but actually how to, how to get it. And so what I would say is this is going to apply for beginners and also people who are experienced programmers because everyone's almost in the same boat when they want to break into the blockchain industry, which is we're all kind of like you know, starting from something else and trying to get into blockchain, whether you're a beginner or whether you have prior programming experiences, like everyone's still kind of new to the skills. So that being said, it's really important for you to show what you can do. Now, if you're an experienced programmer, that's probably going to be easier for you to do um, because you can typically just like show that you're competent, show that you're capable. But especially if you're more beginner, it's going to be really important for you to have a portfolio. Um, and this can be, you know, posted on your GitHub or, you know, just a, a DAP that's deployed to the web and to production. Um, that's going to be a great way to show people that you know what you're doing. Because if you've been able to write something custom and get it out there, that's going to answer a lot of doubts in people's minds. Um, and that's going to give you a leg up, like I said, if you're a beginner or if you're an experienced programmer, that you've already taken the initiative to learn the technology, you know what you're doing, you know how the blockchain works, because that's what's so hard for a lot of people who want to hire is there's such a big knowledge gap from other programming, you know, kind of backgrounds into getting into this. So a portfolio is a must. Now I want to talk about like kind of overcoming your doubts if you're trying to get a job as a blockchain programmer. So sometimes you'll look at a job posting and it'll have requirements on there that you don't quite meet. Um, and maybe it requires you to have more experience that you already have or certain skills that you don't have. But if you have most of what's on the job posting, or even if you just feel confident that you would be capable and are a fast learner, I would say apply for it anyway, especially if you have a portfolio, especially if you have, you know, something that shows what you can do. Um, and if it's a job you really want, because people who hire are always going to favor somebody who shows initiative and shows that they're willing to learn and shows that they're going to you know, not take no for an answer when they're kind of like going after something. That's always a sign of, a, of someone who takes initiative, is you know, responsible for their own work. Um, and that's what an employer is really looking for. 
you know, someone who's hiring just wants to know, are you going to be productive in the pipeline that they have? The work that's coming in, are you going to be able to help do the work? And someone who's, you know, kind of going at it and trying to get things done, even when the circumstances aren't quite ideal, is going to give you a big leg up and it's going to be a big plus. So I would just like maybe over, like just push past that if you think, oh, I don't quite have these skills. I would say apply anyway. Because even if you take the job interviews and you find out there's things you don't know, then that's going to show you what you don't know. And then you just need to learn to go do those things and learn those things. And you can either come back and apply for that job again, or you can talk to another job and you'll know better, you know, the kinds of questions that you're going to get asked in an interview. So that's what I would say. And some people say, oh, I don't know enough. I'm not an expert at this. Well, like I said, I mean, this is all so new that we're all kind of learning. So that's, you know, a doubt that everyone's dealing with in some ways. I mean, it's sort of the basis for the imposter syndrome that lots of programmers have. It's just that it's intensified in this kind of space because nobody really had a great background. We're all kind of learning as we go. So that's what I would say. And the last thing I want to say about getting a job as a blockchain developer is talking about freelancing. So freelancing is a great way, especially to learn a new skill, because you can get in with low risk involved. I mean, it's, it can be higher risk because, you know, you won't necessarily have a guaranteed job, but it, it's low risk for someone to like take a chance on you, especially for smaller, you know, less expensive work. So, you know, you can start with a website like Upwork. You know, there's lots of other ways to get jobs as a freelancer. Um, we'll talk about that more if you want to. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. You know, I've done a lot of freelancing as, as a programmer in, in my time. Um, but let me also, like, give you some advantages to freelancing. And before you rule it out, right, you might say, oh, I want to get a full-time job. I don't want to be a freelancer. Well, let me think about this, especially when you're learning a new skill you know, doing some freelancing on top of your own um, regular job or whatever else you're doing is a way for you to like build up portfolio. Um, so if you can start with your own small portfolio and do other s jobs, smaller jobs as a freelancer, you can just build, it's, it's, you can build your resume really quickly because you then you'll have a bunch of different jobs that you can show. Um, and yeah, you can do that while you're still working. And in fact, I would recommend that if you're trying to make a career change. Also, if you start just want to get another job, freelancing can still be a really good way to try to get a different job. Let me tell you why. If you can develop a relationship with a company as a freelancer, sometimes that allows you to get your foot in the door to a place that isn't currently hiring. And that can be a way for you to eventually work at that job full time. And it's also a really great way for you to get to audition a job without too much commitment. Because if you're a freelancer, it's a lot easier to just kind of get in there and see if you like working with the team or like working with the other people, your managers, your bosses. Um, and it's kind of a way for you to audition the company before you commit to it full time. So if you have ruled out freelancing or you haven't thought about it, um, maybe give that a thought. And like I said, there's a lot to freelancing. I've got a lot of experience doing that. So if you're more interested in that, feel free to leave a comment down below. But that's something to think about just in case you hadn't already. And so that's kind of a big overview of the different ways to get a job as a blockchain developer. Um, and also say like, in addition to all these websites and uh, you know online forums and stuff, don't forget Facebook groups are a great way. Um, you know, local meetups, conferences, really anywhere where you can find other people who are doing the same kinds of things and like you can provide value to them in terms of knowledge, that's going to help them and it's also going to show people that you can like help and know what you're doing and there will just kind of be this reciprocal relationship where you all can help one another and that's kind of how the job world works. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Be sure to click the thumbs up button below if you like this video and also be sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.